feet and I ran out. <laughs> and I turned around and I said, Lord, you know, I know it's you or not. So I kind of believed it at first. You know, all I, all I know is this. I think I had maybe two kids my whole life. I think two that I know of. And one, I got a beautiful daughter named Melissa Marie. And I believe I got a son out there who I don't know. Or the woman won't tell me what one of and just to let all my listeners know, if you feel you're one of Prophet Bishop Steve or go to sons or daughters, please call us at one three oh two four four eight eight four four three. I know you made a joke out of it. Give give them the right number. It is the right number. One three oh two four four eight T G A F. Oh, okay. Well you also give my home phone number, person number. Two four eight seven five nine zero three two two. No, zero two three three. Zero two three three seven five nine zero two three three. Area code one two four eight. But yeah, God brought you through a lot, Steve. I mean, you, oh, you yeah. were one of the. It's just like me. I used to be gay as a three dollar bill, and there's no such thing as three. Well, got here, Andrew. I'll let you, I'll let you give my test, man. We brought it up before. I'm gonna let you give my testimony. What? This happened about a year ago or so. Oh, the, ago. James, the James Bashara case stuff? Yeah. God tried taking you out then too. He had a hit on your life then. Well they had a yeah, they the they devil. tried it. You know, he tried God to just stand still and you know, I and I'll tell you something, me, me as a Christian, I was scared to death. Yeah, the devil, not God, Man, the devil had a hit on you. Yeah, the flesh had flesh, you know. I, I put it this way, you know. Had people out in the street put a gun to my head a few times. What does the Bible say? And, the Bible uh, says, hold on for just a second. What does the Bible say? Stand still and see that I am not God? Or see that I am God? Yeah. Yeah. Stand still and see the glory of God, too. Right. Well, go ahead. Finish your story. For I am God. I'm a God. You know? I say, I shall survive. They even tried you dropping know? off the body in your previous backyard. Yep. And they also uh, try, people try to rub me over the car. You had all kinds and, of things going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So many things going on. Unbelievable. But guys, I, I, I guess, put, here's, here's what I did. Uh, before, I was a, uh, before I was a prophet, I was learning. I say I was learning, but I didn't really I said, you know how easy it is to uh, hijack an airplane, you know, with just a couple of those uh, razor blade cutter, box cutters? And I didn't even know, realize I was prophesying it. I had to visit a dream about the Empire Building and all that. Then two or three days later, it happened. But here's the strange thing about it. And Andrew will be a witness to it, you know. And I can't say too much because I put my life in danger, but I still trust God. Uh, I was at Metro Airport, like I said before. My wife came back from California and went to L.A. And this guy is sitting there, and he's, a, he's an Arabic. I believe he was. And the guy's dressed real sharp, and, you know. And I'm looking at him, and I, you know, this this thing would, you know, would, you know, I guess the Lord was talking. Me. And I'm standing there, and I sat right next to him, and I just said hello, and the guy completely ignored me. So when I watched off the airplane, and I'm looking, you know, and uh, this guy comes out, and he's dressed exactly like the guy who I sat next to. And I kept saying, Lord, this is strange. Something's odd about this. Why did I had about that vision and vision or thought of the razor cutter on you know, the razor cutter with the nine feet feet in the airplane hijacked? And why is this guy turning around who's dressed exactly like this other guy? I remember he had a like a let's give an example. Let's say he had a Rolex watch, he had a leather jacket on, a real nice Shirt, made some pinning left for pinning left for us, and a pair of pants and a belt. 
So what was strange about it was everything this guy was wearing at Metro Airport, this guy comes from L.A., gets out the plane, and looks like identical twin. Oh, wow. And this is strange, strange, strange. So, so I tell my, go ahead. I told my ex-wife about it. It's a strange, you know, this, this, something about it's wrong. And three days later, nine eleven happened. And then I tell you another thing strange. My wife knew somebody. He used to work for like the FBI or CIA or whatever. And uh, so when I flew. To California to meet my mother in law's event, you know. We visit this guy and I tell him what time my flight was, what time I, my ex wife put my ex wife to the ground and got off the plane and everything. And he had security cameras. And uh, let's make the story short that they uh, they caught, they caught him, put it that way. They, caught, they had a lot of people. They were connected from Detroit, from 9-11, you know, from 9-11, you know. And uh, FBI and CIA, who they were, they caught up. Amen. Let me say this. If, he's, if he was wearing penny loafers, was he trying to still stay alive? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the strange part with Andrew was that I, I give an example. We'll say a, a, a guy came off the airplane and you had a twin brother. Yeah, I know. And you're just like, I would have noticed that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Oh, a guy's got a twin brother, you know. But here's, some, here's somebody flying, I don't know, thousands of miles or so to another straight in our state. And what's strange about it is that the guy was, like I said, I mean, people, how many people wear a roll of squats? You know, you know we're, we'll say two or three thousand dollars. You know, and the guy's just Zach belt, Zach jacket, sunglasses, everything to the till. You know, he goes out to play and the guy gets up, you know, and he goes to greet the guy. And I'm thinking, something's odd about this picture. You know, and I'm a baby, go be around with a baby Christian at that time. And uh, I'll give you another testimony, too, before we go. And they had, uh, I'm like a baby Christian, and I'm thinking this, and the guy showed me this, and this, and that, and that, you know. And I didn't really tell anybody this, but now on the radio with you, I was, I was here for my life. But, you know, uh, I say it now. Now, I'm still a little fear to a point, but no. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die God's time, that's what I said. But like we were saying, but like we were trying to say before we actually end, because we're going to end soon, we we were on here for two hours already in eight minutes and 35 seconds. But like I was trying to say, God brought you through a lot. When Jesus died on that cross, he brought you through a whole load of mess. Right, Steve? Oh, amen. Yeah, he tried to, he tried to even save, uh, Joe Gantz. And oh, I, I say that many times. You, you know about it. Joe was right there. He he, be, you were there praying with me. If I remember this correctly, Joe was right there. He was just about to be baptized before he, he went to prison. Yes. Before he was even about to be baptized, he was about to get his daughter back and everything. And he made the wrong choice. God was working so much in his behalf, Steve. He was about to do miracles with that guy. And then all of a sudden, the wrong guy came by and enticed him with money in a fancy car. And he said, see you, God. Let's do this. Yeah, hang on. Yeah. All right. So let's let's real quick let's do a quick prayer before you leave, Steve. Because, but like I'll say, God brought you through a lot, and God had to do that 
God had to die on the cross so that you and I and everyone else could be free. So that was our message for today, guys. It's all about the birth, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And like I said before, when God rose from the grave, he didn't just throw his garments down because he was finished. He did like the master of the house did. He folded his garments because when a master Steve folds his his napkin on the table, that means he's coming back, right? Right. So God is not just dead and God is not just in heaven now, but God is coming back to get to redeem his people. But God did this out of love. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name that you, Father God, have died on that cross for me, for Steve, for my wife, for his family, for everyone that want, chooses to believe in you. We thank you, Lord, that you had your way and you, Lord, gave your son out of love that we can be free from the sin and the burden of bondage so that we can have the assurance that we are going to be with you when we get to heaven. We thank you, Lord, that you are still working in this day, in this hour, Lord, and with this ministry, with this podcast, and everything that is going forth, Lord. I ask you to bless everyone at the sound of my voice. Give them their heart's desires, Lord, that it not be selfish, not one of those I want something, so you got to give it to me. I want a 2021 car because I want one. Rather, I need a car to get to point A to point B to work to church. If you need something and it's a necessity, Lord, give it to them. Give them their heart's desires, Lord, because they desire to be more like you. And pray, I pray that everyone's healed from cancer and diabetes. And yes, Lord, AIDS and syphilis and HIV and gonorrhea. Why? Because if you... Even though they've contracted it themselves, Lord, when you heal them, that shows your power, your mercy, and your grace, Lord. So I ask you to heal them as well in Jesus' name. Go ahead and finish real quick. And Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, that you're a God that is a God who is forever and forever giving to. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, that there's no other God like you. Thank you again, Steve, for being a part of TGIF. Remember, I'm going to send you the flyer on Facebook. I'm going to send it to Profit Banks as well. But thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule, Steve, to be with the listeners and give them something encouraging each week to listen to. So I thank you, Steve. Oh, God bless you, too. I'll give you a call later. And we'll be talking with you soon, and you definitely will be back on the show soon, correct? Correct. Okay, let's do this as we say. Thank you again, Steve. And this, once again, is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust and learn in all your ways. Two, lead not to your own understandings. And three, in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Thank you, and... Thank God it's forever and forever. Amen. And thank you, and good night. See you guys. Bye. Be blessed.